today I want to share some wisdom with you and I want to talk to you about a few things. I have a few people that I speak to on this channel now. I know that I have the young Christian young men who are looking for their Christian wives. There hasn't been some statistics lately showing that you all are not looking for your Christian wives like you usually do. That people are not going on the apps like they have been going. And so I hope that you are not having given up on finding love. I have been offering 25 free coaching. So there's no excuse. If it's anywhere in your heart where you're looking for love, then I'm here to help you. So please, please let me help you. Okay. So I will definitely get everything in the description and let me just um, give you some wisdom that God puts in my heart for today. Okay. So first of all, these are the last days. We have a lot going on in these last days. We have a lot going on in the Middle East, a lot going on with politics and so much. And I know that when you're young like that, you're wondering what is our future? Well, as Christians, we are supposed to continue to move on, filling up our lantern until Jesus returns. Remember, you're not supposed to be living your life like the world. The Babylonian kingdom, they're living um, like there's no tomorrow, they're drink and be merry for tomorrow we, we die. Like they look like that. We're not like that. We're building and living our lives to be more like Christ every day. Now think about this. The whole point of Jesus and the church is that we're married to Jesus. He's our bridegroom coming back to get the church. So if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you would be part of the church, the body of Christ. If you haven't, then I definitely will click on the, uh, I will put at the end of the video um, an opportunity for you to come into the family of Christ. So this could be for you as well. All right. So if you're a young person though, and you're really trying to figure out how to make money, how to survive, how to make it through this life, should I just give in and just be with anybody? Should I just give up dating? This is, you know, we got used to being isolated, right? Well, that is not our faith. Your faith, you are not supposed to give in to being alone. The Bible talks about how you'll burn with lust. And um, God has revealed more to me um, when it comes down to pleasuring yourself. For many years, I asked God to show me wisdom in that. And now I'm learning a lot more about it when we talk about, you know, pornography and looking at people and stuff. So those things have gone higher. So it makes it easier for you not to connect with a woman. And so Christian young men, I know you're no different. You're a guy too. I know it's hard. I know you're probably being affected by pornography. I know that that's the case. Um, however, how do you navigate that? Well, there's a healing process. You got to trust Jesus just like you, in that area, just like you do anything else. Just because no one's there and just because it's very difficult for the flesh to, to do that, you think, well, God just didn't have an answer for this thing. He has an answer for everything else, but this thing is just a little too hard. Come on, we're all human. We know that certain things, because they just seem so impossible to um, abstain from or to find an answer to, or you just can't find it in the Bible, you just kind of do it until you can figure it out, right? And so many of us who have grown in Christ to be more like Christ every day, that's what we do. You know, if it's not a blatant sin, it's hard to know, you know what I mean? Like drinking wine, these are discernible matters, amen? So um, is pleasuring yourself a sin? Well, I think it's a discernible matter that can be sinful if God has revealed to you what it does to you and how it can hurt you and your relationship with God. Wow, that's loaded. So discernible matters, guys, is something that, you know, won't, God is not requiring every Christian to do in order to go to heaven. Everyone must do certain things to go to heaven. And, me, and everybody must do, exhibit these fruits to show that they're even a Christian. But the nine fruits of the Spirit, because that shows that the Holy Spirit's in you. But some people are not developed spiritually to do all nine. So we're getting to the nine, you know, and we're growing and we're being pruned. And the scripture today God revealed to me for me was John 15. And it's showing how Jesus is the vine and his father's a vine dresser. And so, and, it, and I looked at the amplified version because that has not been easy for me always to understand that Jesus is the vine and his father is a vine dresser. And I just thought, and he, we must abide in Jesus. And I, I remember asking a pastor once, what does 
abide mean you know really like you know that's what i want to do in these videos is help us understand you know words that are thrown around and used a lot in christian in christianity but it's like when you really stop and think about it it's like what technically does abide mean you know and yes uh we know it means to be with um i looked it up more and let me just read it to you here uh chapter 15 of john i am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser each branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruits. You are clearly clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have dis discussed with you. Remain in me and I will remain in you just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut, that is cut off from vital union with me. You can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch and withers and dies. And they gather um, such branches and throw them into the fire and they are burned. So this is you going to hell. So basically, the only way to go to heaven is to be on the vine, which is to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then when you're in the vine, you remain in the vine. Because you're a part of this vine, remain in this vine. So in other words, live and, and stay submerged in, in uh, attached and and um, I looked it up, but I don't have my I'm using my phone, but it's you're being you're you're immersed in him and he is your your lifeline, everything. And it's he also says later that, you know, his follow his commandments here and verse 10 if you keep my commandments and obey my teachings you will remain in my love just as i ke have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love so i have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing so this is chapter 15 the uh, from verse 1 to 11 just read that so that sounds to me like first you're saved and then you are pruned regularly to be more like christ every day um so that you can be showing yourself approved so that you can grow so that you can be the all that you can be in god's eyes so every day you're becoming more and more like christ so think about that so what i thought was okay one day I, what I usually do, part of what my resilient joy is that I wrote about, one of my secrets is that just because I don't understand something and I have to work really hard at abstaining for something or I haven't, I haven't been convicted to stop doing certain things, but I, I'm not sure about that thing. I take it to the Lord and I say, Lord, where in your scripture does it say that I can't do that? Show me, teach me, help me understand and give me the power to resist it and to abstain from it. This is what I do as I grow in the Lord. And so what I what I believe this topic of pleasuring yourself is, is that while it's one of the most desperate things we have when we're also trying to um, follow God in and being, um, you know, virgins, you know, or if you've already um, had intercourse, um, abstinence and you want to wait on the Lord for your partner. Now, is it full abstinent if you are pleasuring yourself? And if you are, then there's, there's layers of even that. How are you pleasuring yourself? Is it just to get an itch off because it's, you're already, you woke up and you are already in that place and that state, the heightened state. So now you're really just cooling yourself off because you got to cool yourself off. You know, that happens, right? So that's one thing. Or are you because you've let your mind, your body get so hot and bothered and you refuse to cool yourself off because it, I understand, I, I get it. It's very natural for you to be aroused. It's very natural for you to even want anything. That's all natural. There's nothing wrong with it. However, when you're waiting for your future wife, or even if you're a woman, meaning if you're your husband, this is the world's way 
of, um, you know, deliberately fall boldly just doing that to pleasure yourself is the world's way of dealing with abstinence. But our way of celibacy is the word I'm looking for. Our way is really trying to train ourselves, sort of like this pruning of the vine, train ourselves as much as we can possibly train ourselves to get to a place where we really don't get those desires. I do believe that there is a sexual demon out there that gives us desires that are not spiritual but carnal and they are there's something going on in the spiritual world when we entertain it so if we were to pleasure ourselves there's something that happens we're entertaining some kind of spiritual sexual demon i don't understand it 100 percent, but i believe there's some spirit behind it and it's not a clean one so be careful with that because i do believe that we, I do believe you can open up portals in your life for darkness to come in and for you to have uh, pain. And because he says here, he does this so that you can have the joy and delight. And so I think that starts to steal some of your joy. Even though you have that physical pleasure, you're not having the inner joy. I think it's messing with, excuse me, your inner joy and peace. So when you start to chew at your joy and peace, that's a clue that the action may not be aligned with pleasing Jesus. And so because of that, and it's a discernible matter, it's not going to, I don't believe you're going to, it's going to keep you from going to heaven. I just believe that it's going to corrode at your ability to be clean and hear the Lord if you have giftings and to be all that you can be spiritually. Amen. So, and I'm speaking from, from experience. I'm not just picking at anybody. I'm not trying to be holier than thou because these are things I'm talking to you. Like I've been trying to understand myself and I've been trying to take it to the Lord. And I'm like trying to see it. What, what, what is this? People are saying this, is this true? I don't see it straight in the Bible. If it is, then somebody, you know, let me know where. Um, so it's not straightforward for me, but I, but after when you live and you're growing in the Lord, you start to feel spirits, dark things fall off. And then you're like, whoa, was that a dark spirit? I didn't know that was bad. I just thought, see, we're raised in the Babylonian kingdom. This is the light. We are part of this dead world and of this carnal world. That's how we were born and raised. Nobody was born saved. And so we have to unlearn a lot of things, you know? So one of the things we have to unlearn is that that's fine. What's the big deal? There's a lot of what's the big deal things that once we are growing in Christ, we're like, oh, I had no idea that was a big deal. You know, I used to watch TV shows and movies that were so funny, one of my favorite movies. And as I'm growing now, I can't even watch them now. I literally am so grieved. I can't even watch it. I can't go to the same places. Um, I can't go to Starbucks because I've had an experience with a witch uh, celebrating her um, solstice uh, uh, for Christian Christmas and all the other things that I feel and the spirit that I feel there. And but I, those are discernible manners. Manners. So I don't expect everyone to do it just because God has convicted me. God took wine out of my mouth. Now that I know is not a sin for sure. It's not a sin. But He decided for me because He was calling me to preach that He didn't want me to. And for a long time, I tried to understand that. I was like, Lord, having a glass of wine is not against the Bible. So what's the big deal? So I. But I was feeling like uncomfortable. So most of my life until my uh, mid-20s, I never drank because I was against it because I thought it was awful. But it was coming out of a place of fear because I saw my father beating my mom and I thought it was alcohol that did that. And I just didn't like alcohol. I hated drugs and alcohol because of growing up in Washington Heights, New York City, where it was the mecca of like crack and all that. So I watched people just completely turn into zombies and die and lose their whole lives right in front of me, like really in my own family, my own parents. So these were upstanding, you know, working class, everybody was doing well. And, and, and um, I wasn't in a low class environment. I was in a working class environment where everybody was doing well enough. You know, your typical American. My mom was a professional. They were, everybody was professional. I literally watched these professionals slowly wither away until they were strung out on drugs. So this is really something. So because of that, I, as a Hayoka empath, as you know from my book, you know, I'm, I'm kind of wise beyond my years. I've been for many years. I was able to take in a lot and balance a lot. And I just had this thing with drugs and I had a fear of it. Like this is some powerful stuff. And I, one of the things, and it was a healthy fear. It wasn't like a really horrible. It was just like, I want to make sure that this doesn't happen to me. And I, 
now I'm looking back, you could feel demons like messing with you when you're growing up. When you get broken and cleared out of everything, then you know what they feel like. Everyone's walking around acting like everything's fine, everything's normal, but they're actually lopsided and full of demons around them and telling all of us in movies and everything, telling us that these things are normal. So we grow up feeling these feelings and things and they seem normal because everybody feels them. Until you shake all these demonic things off, do you realize I've been walking around with a demonic force on me? You know, when God started to pull alcohol off of me, I felt and I saw the spirits on it. There are dark spirits on alcohol. They're, they're lingering over it. Like they are, it's almost like they're, I can see the spirit on it. I can feel it in the last few times. And so there's this spirit on it. So be careful how you have glass of wine if the Lord is allowing that still in your life. Make sure that it's pure and it's, um, it's something God's allowing you to have. Because when I say discernible matters also, it depends on your calling. It depends on where you are and your growth. And this is a lot. But when you hear, think about it, let's put two and two together. If God is saying that his father prunes you, and we, we hear in the Amplified Version that continually, so that means he's showing you things over time. That means you maybe you were doing something here. You still say go to heaven, but he didn't let you to mess with it. He didn't tell you anything until a year later. Then it fell off of you. So it could be that you're listening to this now and you don't see anything wrong with it because God hasn't revealed that to you. Or maybe he'll never reveal it to you for your calling. Does that make sense? Either you're not there yet. There's two things discernible matter. We all, when we, when we really surrender, we'll all be at a certain level where all of us who are at this higher level will start to do things like tithing, um, you know, um, abstinence doing all these things. I mean, I think abstinence, that's more in the sin. That is a sin. But things that are um, are discernible in terms of whatever uh, a high level, somebody who's deep in the Lord shouldn't be doing if they're going to be an example. If you're going to be in the fivefold ministry, these are things God should have been delivered you from already. And then if you're really at a high level of one of those, God will decide what he's allowing you to have versus somebody else. And depending on what, what calling you're doing and how you're going to use it, you can do things and others can't. So you may have to dress a certain way where this person doesn't have to do that. Because for my ministry, I God doesn't have any um, anything so far anyway on my dressing because it's part of my ministry to dance and to do the things I do for evangelizing, you know? So he's not giving me restrictions, a lot of that within terms of fit and moving and where I dress and everything. But he has with other things, and these are discernible matters. And as we grow as Christians, we understand that better. We don't we don't pick at people because they're not doing things at exactly the same level as you. Okay, that's general. Discernible matter, meaning any high level, anyone in the fivefold ministries, meaning a pastor, preacher, evangelist, prophet, apostle, all those people who are leading the body probably are all not drinking and all not, we're all probably experiencing this very similar high level ab abstinence from a lot of things that God took from us and healed us from because we're leading. So we have to lead by example, right? But then there are areas where some people are allowed to and others aren't because it's part of the ministry. So it's part of what you have to do for your ministry. You know what I mean? So those are the discernible matters. And then there are things where, so those are the two things. Either you're at or not at that level where God's requiring that for you yet. So you haven't really seen it yet, or maybe you never will. Or, um, and I think everyone's going to be at a high level, whether they're the fivefold or not. God has a point where he wants us all to be examples in general whether you are fivefold or not. And the fivefold, our job is to get you at our levels. That's the goal in general. However, you can go to heaven anyway, and you will go to heaven anyway, even if you didn't get to that level. And if God didn't call that for you or didn't, you didn't never got to that place where God pruned you. The other one is that some things you may never get or you may never be told to do or not to do because it's not aligned with your calling. It has nothing to do with what you need to do. So, so we need to take things to the Lord and ask God, reveal to me, is my sister aligned with you? Because I want to make sure that I'm aligning with somebody who's truly with you. Because from my perspective, it's, it's kind of strange to me what I'm seeing them doing, you know? But God knows best. 
God knows his ways are higher than our ways. So we don't know why God's telling somebody in the body to do something we're not. But we know for sure that there are there are characteristics and there are some things we're supposed to do as Christians. We're not supposed to be cursing. We're not supposed to be um, lying, stealing. Uh, we're supposed to be, there are fruits, five, nine fruits of the spirit that we're all supposed to be exhibiting. Peace, kindness, goodness, uh, for, forgiveness, faithfulness. I mean, I forget his faithfulness, long suffering, patience, self-control, all those things. So if people don't have that, they're not even a Christian. Okay, so we should be able to have those things. So if you see people in the fivefold ministry acting like they can't control themselves, they may not, they're probably not saved because the Bible says, you know us by our fruit. You need to know all of this. And this is the kind of wisdom I want to share with you because there's a lot of lies out there about Christianity. That being said, wherever you are in your walk is where you should be with this pleasuring yourself. Really honestly take it to the Lord because I'm an example of someone that you can be healed from it. God has healed me and, um, you know, this is something that, you know, my husband and I have seen the Lord completely deliver us. Like since we've been in, in our relationship, we, and we think it's better for the relationship. We think that, um, even though if you are doing that and you're in a relationship, I do believe that people, you should tell your partner every time you're doing that because it, it really does take away from what everything that you would give your partner. So if a married couple is in agreement and that's what they allow themselves to do together to each other, to themselves, and that's something part of their relationship, it should always be divulged to your partner. They should never feel like they are surprised that you're acting like you don't feel excited to be with them. And they need to know why. So you need to make it clear to them. It's because we were away. I pleasured myself. It was really hard. Talk, always tell your partner if you're still doing that. But I do now believe, and I now know for sure, that um, it is something God can deliver you from and what God wants to deliver you from. And should you should ask for that deliverance because it will keep you more, believe it or not, doing it less will keep you able to wait for a person than doing it more, believe it or not. And you'll get draw closer to the Lord and you'll be more pure and you'll just be joy, more joyful. It will, it takes your joy away. It takes, there's no shame. If it, wherever there's shame, that is from the depth of hell. Shame is in hell. And, and um, pleasuring yourself right after that, there's a feeling of shame. There's a feeling of a spirit that comes to minister to you in, from hell. And so, because they believe that this could be a door where you can be separated from Jesus. And so don't give the devil any area to separate you. So I'm being very careful with how I'm saying this because I don't think it's fair to say, stop doing that, that's a sin. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you are part of the vine and let God prune you. That's what I'm saying. And, and, and ask for it and wait on it and want that because when you do heal yourself from that, you can be in the single season even better. You can be pleasing to the Lord. You'll be more powerful and joyful. He says, I have told you these things so that you, so that my capital and joy and delight may be in you and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. And so if Jesus wants that for you, what do you think the devil wants for you? So he's going to try and find any area to do that. So anything I say that's discernible like this, the only way to be sure a hundred percent sure that you, you yourself, you know, John, Peter, whatever your name is, you are doing what's in line with your calling is to do what is called walking in the spirit. Okay. I'm going to do another, another, the next video is going to be about walking in the spirit. So please come back for that. We'll be talking about that tomorrow. Okay. So I hope this has blessed you. If you have any questions, go into the comments and don't give up on finding your love. This is the devil lying to you. We don't go with the world. We don't do the things the world does. We wait on the Lord and we cool our bodies down, our minds down. We don't satisfy ourselves on our own. We wait on the Lord and stay incomplete so that you have a room for her so she can come. Okay? Don't be so self-sufficient that you don't have room for her. Keep yourself wanting her. The world is against men against women and everyone against marriage and everything. But we model Jesus in the church. 
you are the, the man is like Jesus and the woman is like the church. Okay. Keep, ask God to keep you vulnerable, soft and gentle in your heart to receive the woman. I have 25 free coaching sessions that I want to give you. So please reach out to me. Please click on the calendar link and make an appointment. Okay. God bless you. And I, I hope that this blessed you. Bye.